Maybe I'm crazy, but Jay Z is aging Beyonce. <laughs> it's making me sad. We don't deserve this. <laughs> I, we'll get to it later. That's your response. I, uh, you, were, you weren't prepared for it. Aging Beyonce. Yes, we'll get to it later. We'll get to it later. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. That's Brandon Newman. The slander. Uh, no, I'm just keeping it real. I'm I'm really saying what everyone wants to say. I'm glad you're coming with this take because uh, we're going to have a conversation. Yeah, we are. Uh, so we have a lot to get to today. Mm-hmm. Uh, NBA offseason free agency is, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say it's the greatest time in sports. People think that the summer is boring mm-hmm. and it's not, it's just not, the, it's not the truth. It really isn't. No, Besides the NBA finals and a, a little bit of the conference finals, mm-hmm. um, cause those, you know, if you're in the Eastern conference can be quite boring usually also. Um, although this year, they, this year they were competitive. Yes. They gave them a good run. Both sides. Um, it was, so there was a moment there where I really thought it could happen. Then the Raptor series. That's being being sarcastic. Of course. Um, if you're new to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast, I throw that in sometimes. <laughs> anyway, the point is, free agency is amazing because mm-hmm. we've got Kawhi Leonard, we've got LeBron James. The draft is this week. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening. We'll talk to Jordan Schultz in a minute, Yahoo yes. Insider. Um, pick his brain on 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 that because I feel like the draft is kind of boring. Not a lot of big names, Joy. Uh, I'm not on the edge of my seat to find out where anyone goes. When that European guy is being talked about a lot near the draft day, it's like, come on, guys. That European guy. <laughs> Every year, but I'm saying every year is like oh, when you hear when you hear uh, European guy? when the, when there's a draft where the European guy Chris is being Saps mentioned Porzingis a lot. Is, was one of my favorite draft moments of all. Oh yeah, that was fun. Time that was fun. so New York Knicks. Yes, all the fans booing their minds out. We're getting to the Knicks this podcast. Boo! What? We're going to talk about the Knicks. We're going to talk bit, about so. the Knicks. Yeah. Uh, I wish the Knicks were better. Yeah. Actually, all right, time for would it or quit it? Would, would it, it or, or quit it? Would it? Quit. It. Would it? Oh, we, I still don't love it, that intro song, but it, um, all right. What it, am I? What am I? Okay. Winning or quitting today? Tom Brady mm. went on Oprah's Super Soul Conversations and had an answer for everything. How's your relationship with Belichick? All of anthem protests. Got respect for it. When's the end? Soon. Joy. Giselle sent Brady's clone Tommy to do this interview with Oprah. With it or quit it? Uh. It, there's Pod Tom. Yes. And then there's Tommy. Tommy is real Tom Brady, the human. Oh, version. that's Tommy. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, Pod if, you Tom. if you don't know about this theory, I have a theory that there are two Tom Brady's. If you watch Black Mirror, uh, I believe it's season two, episode <laughs> one, they have pod people for like if someone in your life passes away, they can yes. send you a version of them. Oh, um, yes. It's very creepy. Um, however, Ooh. I mean, didn't that just make your skin crawl? Oh my God. You know what it does? When I truly get weirded out, my, my throat does this like tightening thing oh, yeah. where I'm like, the, ugh. You feel the glands. Yes. Mm. Um, so I believe that there's a pod Tom mm-hmm. and then Tommy. Tommy's real Tom Brady and pod Tom is, uh, the person that Giselle, the person Giselle like hangs out with and like takes to the Met Gala and stuff. So you thought it was Tom, was Todd Palm. Pod Tom, Pod, Pod, Tom. Pod Tom is what went to, is what went to see Oprah. Yes, uh, I love you, Auntie O. Yes. Uh, she's amazing. She mm-hmm. always she does get to, down to the soul. She does. She has a way of asking questions where you're like, yes, I'll tell you my deepest darkest secrets, and then cry the about it, and then it'll be on live television. That's fine. And she just laughs. I'm just gonna it? jump on this couch and tell you how much I love Katie. <laughs> So that's a different situation. Um, man, wow! Have that's, you watched a Scientology uh, movie on Netflix? Going clear. It makes me want to move out of Los Angeles. Uh, uh, it makes me want to understand the world and the people in it more. No, not me. I don't. <laughs> I don't even know anything. Anyway, uh, Pod Tom said a lot of things I don't believe. Like, yes. for example, he had a very hard time saying that he loves Bill Belichick. It was like, uh, do you? How do you feel about Bill Belichick? Do you guys have a problem? You have a thing? And he was like, I. I he loves him. <laughs> he got it out though. He he did manage to get it out. Yeah. Like this, I have the quote from him. And it, says, it says, "I love him." It didn't include the seventeen stutters before he right. said, "I love him." Yeah. So I don't believe that. Um, yeah. I do think it's kind of scary if you're a Tom Brady fanatic that he said he is looking towards the end because I really believe once you start talking about it, you know, I believe in the visual visualization, sure. the law it's, of attraction. It's here though. No, I'm not a Scientologist, but this is real things. Yeah. And he like wants to spend more time with his kids and stuff which is totally respectable but it, it makes you think about not playing with rage i do think they're gonna win the super bowl again this year um but How? you know because I, I just i'm not i'm not ready, i'm not ready to believe it okay, okay? i'm just yes. not yes. uh and then he doesn't like being called the goat that i can also believe like that like people are gonna yeah. doubt that but if i mean what kind of an a-hole are you if you're like yeah you know what i am the greatest 
No, it's it's. I'm the greatest. It's a problem with the. He talked about it in the interview as well. The younger generation, these younger kids, have thousands of followers coming out of high school. They are they get granted goat status before they've done anything at all. Yeah. And the reason he doesn't want to be called the goat is because he's still doing it. Yeah, and I also think that's part of Tom Brady's greatness because he was a sixth round pick who had an awful uh, combine and looked like he didn't have a muscle in his body. Right. So I, I believe him when he says that. Now, the anthem protests. Mm. <sighs> Tap dancing, Tom. Look. He, what he said was there were a lot of really good, healthy conversations coming out of it in our locker room. I've been with different guys from all parts of the country, every color, race, belief. And you respect what other people – I mean, I respect why people are doing what they're doing, and they're doing it for different reasons, and that's okay. Okay, Tommy. But sure. can you say this, like, when it's in the middle of it? Right. Anything. Uh, can you say anything? Because a lot of people were talking at that point. Everyone's in time. talking about it. Yes. It's a thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Pretty so big thing. so maybe, maybe you maybe you say something while it's actually going on. And this is proof that this is pod Tom, because we know real Tommy yes. rocking that red hat in the uh in, in the right lockers, right? Yeah. It was right behind you. He's trying to make America placed. great again. Right. And real Tommy you know that. real Tommy's trying to make America great again. Yes. Pod Tom is a little bit more liberal. He cares so, about unity. Yeah. Yeah, Teammates. he's about the Holy Trinity right. of Lavar God and, and Leangelo. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 that I'm like a whatever, like a little too little, too late. But um, I love Auntie O so much. And she and she came back. She's like, uh, what type of conversations? She's like, <laughs> oh, you know, just about getting together and you know not being mad at each other. Yeah, Todd Pom, 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 Pom Todd, Todd Pom, Pom, Pod, 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 Tom. Tom, Pod Tom, Pod Tom, Pod Tom, Pod, Pod Tom, Yummy. I don't like pad thai actually. You don't like pad thai? I don't. Why not? It's because I because I like my salty. Most I like my salty of things version. to be salty. Yeah. And don't like spicy savory. things to be. Ugh. You know, like, I don't I don't like the sweetness of it. Plus, I'm not a huge peanut butter fan. If I'm being honest, like it's okay. Oh, pad thai. Does it come with all peanut peanut butter? Come with all pad thai. It's just peanuts. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the noodles. Okay. I mean, I'll eat it. But all right, what's next? Okay, Jerry Jones is a friend to his players and his president. The Cowboys owner recently caped up for Ezekiel Elliott saying he trusts Zeke as much as he trusts himself. (laughs) But the third year running back needs a talking to sometimes daily to keep him on the straight and narrow. Joy, there's too much pressure on Zeke to have a big season. Quit it or quit it. No, there's not too much pressure. Really? Yeah, I'm quitting that. No, you're in your third year. You are you, you've gone Those two you, years though. Joy. You've put you had an amazing rookie year. You had a you had a cloud hanging over your entire team. Which whether you whether people want to put that responsibility on him or not, the re, the main reason that the Cowboys had a bad season last year was because of Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Whether whether it was the cause of the NFL, Des Bryant as well. Uh, maybe uh, no, like if Zeke is out there every game, regardless of Sean Lee being out, regard, regardless of Des Bryant having a bad season, right. um, it, that, none of that matters to me because Zeke is what makes that offense go. And maybe they wouldn't have made it far in the playoffs, but they wouldn't have had the season they had last year. Mm-hmm. And look, Zeke is what he is. I, th- I mean, at this point, he's. I'm not saying he can't grow. I'm not saying he can't evolve. I'm not saying he can't mature. But if you're saying you got to have a talk daily. It's crazy. Daily? Every what? day? That's what you do with children, literally. Right. So, uh, no, multiple times a day you have to do yeah. that with children. So that's that's not encouraging to me. No. And look, I want to I want to give Zeke a chance, and um, you know, that's that's coming from me based off of his past. But right. like you're doing, I don't, listen, I'm I don't like if you want to go buy penis water guns and spray them at people in Key West, that's fine. Don't spray me because I don't it's like I don't like to be sprayed. Okay, that ends badly for you. But if you want to spray other people, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> And I've been to Key West. They sell all kinds of uh, fun little items. Okay, right. yes. it's a wild and crazy place. Yeah. Lots of alcohol. You can mm-hmm. walk down the street with it. All right, very fun. However, you're Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. Mm-hmm. Stop pretending like people aren't going to take pictures of you. It's just what it is. I yeah. give people, I give players, young players, a lot of slack, and and, and, and I try to give them opportunities they deserve it. because. It's it's hard. Like the, the, there wasn't social media 10, 15 years ago mm-hmm. in these situations when you're when guys were making the same decisions that they were making. Yeah. So I think there's an added pressure with social media these days and with everyone having camera phones. I get it. But you but it is what it is. Like you gotta okay. evolve. You I know this. That. But you social- didn't grow up not having the internet. No, of course. But social media my biggest problem with this whole thing is they're trying to make Ezekiel Elliott something that he's not. And that is a actual leader on the football team he can lead with statistics and his performance and everyone can try to up the ante to play as well as ezekiel elliott is playing on every sunday 
Thursday, whatever time they play in the games nowadays. But to try to force him into a leadership role seems like a huge mistake, the social pro- media or not. The problem is for people who are going to be like, well, look, let him live his life. Well, when he does live his life, he gets suspended yeah. and affects the football team. Yeah. So I don't care about the Cowboys being good or not. Actually, that's not true. I would like for the Cowboys to be good because yeah. big brands better yeah, than the business. Yeah, of course, yeah. But in general, I don't care about the Cowboys. The point is you don't get to act that way anymore. It's just not available. It doesn't work. The NFL yeah. destroyed that investigation. They couldn't have done a worse job with it, just to be clear. I've been very critical of them. And, and I still I still have a very – like this, an innovative concept for the NFL while we're on the topic because I mentioned this before, but just in case. Uh, just just a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Take the, 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 the power to punish out of Roger Goodell's hands. It doesn't mean you're any less powerful. It doesn't mean it. Still Roger you can Goodell. still be on the panel. Yeah. Okay, take it out of Roger Goodell's hands. Mm-hmm. And create this uh, this thing called a panel of people, mm-hmm. and then you present this the problem to them, and then they they speak amongst each other. Maybe 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 add some diversity to it. Yeah. You know, maybe like a woman, oh. maybe a black person. Oh, that'd be you great. Know? There's so many of those uh, in the NFL. There are there's some. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then you know maybe maybe a, a person of LGBT. You know. You know yes. That. Yes. Uh, we could have an older person. We could have a younger person. A diverse committee is what you're saying. Yes, uh, we, we could do di- diversity. We should yes. do that. And on the panel, mm-hmm. and then you know, just make everyone comfortable. You can put like four or five white guys, all right. And then, yes. and then you lot, present though. the problem. We well, gotta balance. Yeah, it's just does anything. Three white guys. No, no, no. It's, it can't be any less than four. One can be really old. The point. They're all gonna be really old. What? <laughs> what's? What, I didn't mean young white guys. Yeah, of course. Okay. The point is, mm-hmm. present the problem to them. They they speak amongst themselves, and then they give a verdict, a jury, if you will. Ooh. And then that's a term. And then the punishment is. Is given, and then, yes. and, and even it could be even Novel wilder. Guys. These people could every couple of years. What are they gonna do? They could be cycled up for new people. Just, re- and I feel like that would solve Joy, a lot of the problems. You need to write a letter. You know, you I feel like we already have. We kind of already have this in place in our society. Dance with the stars. It's very similar. Something like it. Yeah. Process. Okay. Speaking of too much pressure to succeed, I present to you a quote from the Baker Mayfield. They traded a third round pick for Tyrod. Just doesn't make sense. The guy that he is for this franchise, for all of our teammates, it's unbelievable. And so for me, to be able to watch him and learn from him, it's great. It's good for me overall. Joy, Swaggy B will not start a game this season. Quit it or quit it. <laughs> quit it. Really? Quit it. Of course you quit it. Quit I'm with it. it. I'm with it. Quit it. I'm with it. All right, look. Let's talk about it. I like Tyrod. Mm-hmm. Let's just be clear about that. Yes. I think Tyrod is a starting quarterback for a decent team. Clearly. Uh, here's the problem. You picked Baker Mayfield number one overall. That's mm-hmm. the first pick in the NFL draft for anyone who's not paying attention. Yes. Number one overall means he's the first guy. That he's the best guy. <laughs> first the guy draft, off the board. Right? That's what number one overall means. Right. Okay? So no, you, you've taken him number one overall. Mario you've Williams. leveraged your franchise yes. on this guy. And now you're trying to tell me that Tyrod Taylor is the answer? No, you're not telling me that. What you are telling me, though, is that you're not interested in losing your job this year. Not this year. Now, <laughs> I respect it from a from a professional standpoint, yeah. point, from a personal standpoint. Mm-hmm. But from a football standpoint, just go that way. All the way that way with this nonsense. It's not about Baker Mayfield not being ready to play football. You picked him number one overall. That doesn't mean he's, he's got to be ready to play football. That doesn't mean he's not ready to play football. He could be ready to play football if they were, if Tyrod Taylor wasn't in front of him. This is exactly my point. What are you doing? You won zero games last year, so you're just trying to win like six games okay. so you can keep your job so that next year you can play Baker Mayfield. Okay. So what you're doing is you're taking a year away from Baker Mayfield developing in the NFL and playing against NFL he's talent. He's going to be developing? Where? With against the Browns practice squad? How bad is the Browns practice squad? It's good for me overall. These are bacon. This, this is, is Swaggy I, B's look, words. Look, look, Swaggy, you're being very professional. You're taking all you've you've listened so well. When has he ever the, been the, really to, professional? To He's Taylor, honest. That's his problem. Joy He's Taylor honest. Media speak school. You are <laughs> he acing did. it. Okay. He did do that, I'm yeah. very proud of you. You are you are answering every question with at elite level. That's a theory. Gold yes. star for Swaggy B. Yes. All right. Got it. However, forget what Swaggy B is saying because we all know it's nonsense. What's really happening here is Hugh Jackson doesn't want to lose his job, so he's not starting. Ba- he can get Baker fired Mayfield. at the end of the season. The, 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 the Titans won a playoff game and fired their head coach at the end of the season. Yes, Hugh can- Jackson's gone regardless. I think it's better for Baker to sit, watch a team win seven games, and be competitive in two of them that they're not supposed to win. 
they're going to be a good football team. And if they were not going to be a good football team, Baker Mayfield would be the starter. I, I mean, you picked him number one overall. If you had picked him 15th, even still, I don't like it. I if you pick him, if you take concept, a quarterback but... in the first round and you don't have a quarterback, which they don't, yes, you play the quarterback that you picked. He's got that's that's how you get better. There's a time when you watch, and you know what that is? That's OTAs. Okay, there, and then there's a time that you play football. You can't get better at playing football by watching other people play football. Sorry. You don't. I'm with the, the, you, but this is a coaching. You gotta move. look at your. You gotta this look is at your personnel. Keep your job as a coach. Move. I hear you. You gotta. But you gotta look at your personnel. Tyra I Taylor's have a question. What do you? How can you be worse? Can you be worse? You won no games, so you can't be worse. It's the best. You literally can't be worse. This is the best offense. This is the best quarterback room the Todd only Haley's thing ever that seen. Could happen. Oh, don't even get me started. On ever Todd, seen Todd Haley? Todd Haley just served up the a, a, a giant bowl. Of poo poo nonsense. No, he now listen. No, you're gonna eat that no, poo poo no, nonsense. No, no, no. We can find Have out. That. We can find out he had dementia. Poo poo nonsense. We can, all over your we computer. can find out he has dementia after the season. No. But right now, what he has is a serious case of the petties, and he doesn't know how to be slick with it. Okay, because 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 you're throwing you're, you're really oh, just God, trying to show to shade oh. on Ben Roethlisberger. When does hard knock start? And it's not it's not happening. This is the best quarterback room I've ever been in. Have you? I haven't. I haven't been in a quarterback room. Do you think that Todd Haley knows he coaches for the Browns now? Um. Yeah. 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 I don't. This think last he does. interview. I don't think he interview. does. <laughs> what a joke. Moving on. Uh, to paraphrase Biggie, fake beef is when you start sh- with your friends to seem edgy and build your brand. Lakers rookie Lonzo Ball and Kylie Kuzma did just that until the Lakers told them to chill. Honestly, though, I'm here for it. Joy. This fake beef is ex- this fake beef is exactly what the NBA needs. Win it or quit it. Who the bleep is Kylie Kuzma? Kylie Kuzma. That was the diss track that Lonzo Lonzo did for. I, I did not listen to the entire diss track. I listened to the important parts. It was two minutes and um, one minute of content. I don't have two minutes for that. Uh, okay, so what was the question? Joy, this fake beef is exactly what the NBA needs. Win it or quit it. Quit it. Here, here's the problem. Everyone knows it's a fake beef, except for like fifteen super old crunchy <laughs> dudes who don't know what. Who, who but still, those are the people in the front still, office of who Lakers. Still think that every time there's a rap beef, that it ends up like Biggie and Pac, which, by the way, is not what actually happened with Biggie and Pac. Okay, right, exactly. There's other theories floating right. out there. Um, Pac was the revolutionary. Series. It's you know, it's a thing. Look into yeah. it. Anyway, the point is, everyone knows it's fake. So I don't, I don't get it. I'm gonna be the old person here. I don't get it. Everyone knows it's fake. So what's the point other than just putting out content for social media? That part I get. But if you're Magic Johnson, you're trying to recruit LeBron James, this is not this is not cool. This is this isn't, really this deterring work. LeBron? I know yes, Kyle because, Collins yes, thinks because, so. Yes, because, yes, here's why. It's not that it's, it's deterring LeBron because Magic is going to assure LeBron that whatever one of these – these young oh, yeah. men that he would like to say bye-bye is right. bye-bye. Yes. Okay, so whatever LeBron wants is going to be given to him. Right. What, what Lonzo and Kuzma did is make themselves expendable is the reality of it. Either I yeah. don't care. I like content. I like drama. I'm yes. fine with all of it. It doesn't matter to me. I don't find it interesting because I know that it's fake. I don't care if you guys have bars. That's why I'm not going to listen to it. I've heard it, obviously, but I'm right. not going to listen to it. Oh, he made fun of him. Great. Yes. Uh, so it doesn't move me in that way. The, the bigger picture of it is that now they are expendable. That's the point. And the thing that I that I didn't get to explain to Colin about all this, but this is this is the issue. Like when people are looking at this and they're like, um, this is messy and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Cube was on, he doesn't like it, which pretty much means it ain't cool. Right. Yes. He's pretty much the arbiter on what is cool and what is not cool. Ice Cube said you need to chill out. Especially uh, in LA. I, I think and we're for done. The I think we're done. Yeah. I think we're done with this now. Yeah. The point is kids don't care about winning anymore. They just don't. They don't. It's no. not about championships. Think about the players who win in this league. Like let's let's talk about the Warriors, for example. None of them are kids. Okay. Well, okay. None. Yes, yes, None. Yes, yes, they're yes, all yes. they're all veterans. Yes. Okay. True. None of them are kids. True. If you look at Houston. Why is Houston winning? James Harden isn't 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 new. Chris yeah. Paul, damn sure ain't new. No. Okay. Look at it. LeBron. This is the oldest, the oldest contraption that ever put together in NBA history. Those old Lakers showed up. The Cavs when they needed to. All right, I'm sorry, Lakers. Yeah, Cavs, Cavs. showed up when they needed. Yeah. Them. So, so, so the them. younger generation, the millennials, if you will, which I don't consider them to be millennials. What is mm-hmm. it? Project X or or or, or, or um, Generation X? Project X was that a good? Project was a movie. X was that movie where they tore up the house? Ooh, they don't have. Mm-mm, that no, was, my mom's ooh. house. 
Lord, no. So like one time at the theater, it was fun, That's but I just guy. feel bad afterwards. Yeah, I called like, my mom after and apologized. Like, yeah, for not doing that. I, yeah, I like, I'm sorry, I, I didn't even, I just want you to know, I saw this movie, I, I never movie, thought of doing it. Yeah, I would never even, If you even no. heard of it, I, guess I would never do that. <laughs> um, anyway, the point is, Generation X is what yes. they are. Uh, that they're, they're different, it's AAU, mm-hmm. everyone teams up together to, to create the, yeah. the best team, they play together, they're all friends, they do fake beefs, right. it's just different. And, and maybe if LeBron gets there, the mentality will change. But championships don't make stars anymore. Hmm, dang, that's a good point. I got bars for you today. Yeah. Championships don't make stars anymore. Yeah. You have Instagram. You have Twitter. These kids come in with a, mi- a million followers before yeah. they even hit the NBA. Mm-hmm. They ain't worried about your rings. Well, the, are, They're trying to make millions of dollars, sell a bunch of shoes, get bitches, party in the hills. Yeah. That's what they're trying to they do. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real with you. That no, it's not it's that true. important. But I, I think now it's to the point where being a star is enabling people from becoming champions, which that's, that's the dangerous part. Like if you cannot be a, become a champion because you're too busy doing things, chasing content, chasing, chasing likes, chasing, chasing follows, it's clearly, it's clearly not going to lead to wins. Well, of course, be, this is, this is why it's become more of a business than actual competition. Because if you look at if you look at what you just said, you can make millions and millions and millions of dollars in endorsements based off of your social media brands. Yeah. So when I can make this much money, not whether I have a good season or not, mm-hmm. whether I shoot forty five percent from the free throw line or not, yeah. what do I care? I mean, obviously I'm gonna try and get better. I'm gonna stay in the league and stay relevant. I'm not saying they don't care about basketball or being good. Of course they do. Right. But I'm just saying it's not as important. That 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 rate, you, and you can't tell me that it is. Like you, it, it's fine. You can tell me that you work hard, but you are not focused on winning a championship if you are doing stuff like this, which is fine. I'm fine with that. But you can't have everything. You just can't. Like Kobe did this, okay? But what what was what was Kobe doing? Like, do we have what, what was Kobe doing when he put out his rap album? Was he Kobe at that point? No, that's it. Wasn't his first and second year though either. You know what I mean? Like these people, these kids are, re- they're really kids. Like Josh Hart said, it's like, we're all just kids messing around. We just like, people are just watching us now. Right. But that's my, that's my point. Like this stuff happened before, before there was social media. And that's the point. Like we, they didn't get critiqued about this. Yeah. They didn't get asked every three seconds. They're, they're, they're. It wasn't a problem teammates. in the locker room. Right. right. Like their teammates didn't get asked about it. It's a different world now. You're obviously doing this for social media. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm fine with it, but there's only so much time in a day, and that's what that's what people are going to be critical of you for. Because yeah. you still have old school players, you still have old school coaches, you still have old school media, and I'm kind of in the middle of the two. Like I like championships. Sorry, I like winning. Like call call, call me an elitist. You like like Kevin call, Durant championships? call me corny or not. I don't care, man. You We're like gonna him? look back 20 years from now and be like, Kevin Durant has this many rings. Really? And, and like three people will be like, Yeah, but remember that time? Remember that time he joined the seven three and nineteen and beat him three one? I'm gonna be one of them three. Yeah, everyone's gonna be like, Yeah, cool, man. No one cares because <laughs> Kevin Durant has that many rings. They're not gonna do it. Look, everyone said that about LeBron when he went to Miami. And now nobody even mentions it. Because he won one in Cleveland by himself. Okay, but so what? So uh, who's the, Kevin, Durant, Kevin Durant's career is not over. Kevin Durant very well may go somewhere else. The, the I hope things, so. things with Golden State may change. Yeah. They may have to overcome something, which they did. They beat Houston. Which David I, West I mean, tried to claim I they, they, I can't even say that they got over stuff. In, what did you say? They beat Houston. <laughs> I mean, I knew that was going to happen. I did say it. Chris Paul was out, though. Look, Chris right, Paul was but, out. But well, looking back on it, nobody's yeah. going to talk about Chris Paul being out. Yeah, you're right. People have stopped talking about it now. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. All right, so let's get to Jordan Schultz, Yahoo Sports Insider. And you can also listen to his very good podcast, mm-hmm. Pull Up with CJ McCollum. It's on Hello. iTunes, SoundCloud, um, I'm assuming Google Play and all the other fun all places, places you can get podcasts. So mm-hmm. this is Jordan Schultz. Special day. We've got Jordan Schultz on the hey. Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Joy. I appreciate you. You got a little cool stuff in the background there. What you got going on? I got my uh, my Kobe sign. Uh, I got my my Ichiro mitt. I actually have some other stuff I can pull down here. I got the little Russell Wilson sign helmet. Whoa! Uh, now we'll- you know it's about it's. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out if I should just keep it all the same, change it, if, you know, day to day. I don't know yet, but I feel <laughs> like this is a good setup for now. And I can start to incorporate, you know, new items in the future. Yes. Well, you're you're, you're basically a, an interior designer. So where, where, where do you where do you where do you land on the Kobe Lebron debate? You know, just just since we have. Uh, I so I I love Kobe, but he, when he entered, he injected himself into that conversation recently. Mm. 
uh, it's hard to be like, okay, Kobe, MJ, LeBron. Like, I, I feel like Kobe's realistically like a top 10 guy, top 12 to 15 Ooh. at worst. Ooh. At worst. You got you to think about it at worst. So I would say, but but for me, like probably a top 10. But like LeBron and MJ, to me, are the definable one and two. Then mm. you can start talking about like Kareem and Magic and Bird and Wilt. But like Kobe's, you know, he does have the five rings, which I do appreciate. Those he are nice. does. And Kobe would not appreciate you saying he's a top 15 player. <laughs> he, 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 all right, how about top eight to 10? How about that? <laughs> I love it. No, no, stick with this. It's a hot take, top 15. Um, but you mentioned LeBron. It's uh, it's LeBron James summer. Mm-hmm. Right now it's kind of Kawhi summer because no one really has a good gauge on what LeBron's going to do. But I feel like he's coming to the Lakers. Obviously I'd love to see him go back to the Heat, but I don't think that's possible. Um, what do you think about LeBron to the Lakers? And now there's some rumors today that he he's trying to figure out how to stay in Cleveland. Not buying that, but where do you think he ends up? Yeah, I've said for a while, Joy, I thought the Lakers. For me it's about becoming – uh, an, an iconic global brand and using LA, using that platform, which to me still has some relevance, um, despite you know social media making every market so accessible. But using that, using Magic as a blueprint, and then the opportunity to still be the guy. If he goes to Houston, for example, he, it's you know it's Chris's team, it's James's team, it's LeBron's team. Where does he fit in? If he goes to Philadelphia, he has to babysit Embiid and Simmons. He doesn't want to do that. If he opts in with Cleveland, um, they're not going to win a championship. So the Lakers present an opportunity, whether it's with Kuzma and Ingram, uh, whether it's the Lakers going out and getting Kawhi Leonard or Paul George, but an opportunity to win, to build a legacy, and to really establish himself on and off the court for the foreseeable future. Now, people have been telling me that I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. For months now, That I've been saying that he needs to come to the Lakers because it's the only move to me that makes sense. If Sixers sounds good, but you're still in the East, so people are still going to say you never left the Eastern Conference and it was the weaker conference the entire your entire career. If you go to Houston, uh, I, I mean, quite frankly, like I'm going to sound like a hater, but Houston doesn't move me. There's nothing edgy about Houston. It's not, it's not a market that people flock to. And like you said, you've got other superstars there that have already established themselves as that being their team. So the only move to me that makes sense for his legacy at this point in his career uh, and moving forward out of that is the Lakers. I and mean, you've seen what Magic Johnson has done. I mean, Colin said it on the Hurt today. What is he worth? Seven hundred million dollars. What did he make as a player? Maybe thirty. Mm. He's a mo- he's a, he's an international mogul. And there's a different there's a different thing to playing for the Lakers than for any other team in the league. Like you can argue Boston, you can argue New York. He's not going there. He's he, he's coming to the Lakers. It makes the most sense for this era of his career. I, I totally agree. It, he's. He's always, to me, been the perfect guy to be in L.A. because he's not just a basketball player. He's, he's acting. He's an activist. He's, he's a global brand. There's so few guys like that with respect to other great players. And to go to the Lakers, to be in the West, to me, almost alleviates some of the pressure that he would if he went to Houston, where he has to win a title right away. The Lakers, it, assuming why don't we just assume that they get either – Paul George and or Kawhi, Th- then there's a real blueprint there or a, a framework, a foundation to win, but not have the pressure of winning right away and where it can be his team and he has an opportunity to build his brand. All of that to me is, is, is a positive and the NBA is better when teams like the Lakers are relevant and we haven't had major market teams relevant. Think about you know Dallas, the Knicks, the Bulls. These teams have not been relevant. Now the Lakers can come back into that stratosphere with LeBron as the impetus to it. I, I completely agree. I love when the teams that are supposed to be good are good in sports. It's better for everyone. But you said something that stood out to me um, about him babysitting in Philly. Wouldn't LeBron have to babysit for the Lakers? So I'm assuming that they, if they get Kawhi, then they either trade Ingram or Kuzma. Right. Or Possibly both, because I don't think San Antonio would want Lonzo Ball. Um, and I also, to your point, there is yes some of that, but it would still it would be his definable team. Whereas in Philly, Embiid mm. and Simmons already have so much cachet, and especially Embiid, he's so beloved there. Where I'm not sure it would ever like it would be LeBron's team, but it, he would be sharing a lot. Whereas he's in 
if he's with the Lakers, you know, Ingram and Kuzma, while people like them, haven't built up, you know, that 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 foundation yet. So right. to me, I, I hear what you're saying, but I, I think the Lakers probably, I, I feel like makes the most sense for everything he wants to accomplish at 33. So San Antonio, I don't know if I if I agree with that. Lonzo seems like the perfect Popovich player, actually, because he, I mean, even though he has all this, you know, dish track stuff and the music video and all that going on, I feel like if he got under a coach like Popovich, he could fit into that system really well. He's a very unselfish player, also. That's that's True. right. That the the bigger picture here, Joy, is that they have the Jante Murray, who they really like, mm -hmm. and who they're developing, and who I think is better. Than ball, I think he has a really a higher upside offensively and wow. similar. You know, big long point guard, better athlete than ball. But if you bring in Lonzo there, then what what does that do to Murray, who right. has basically supplanted you know Tony Parker as as their lead point guard of the future? Also, I'm not sure that that Popovich really would want the Levar Ball Lonzo Ball. Sure, Popovich has said there's been rumors about him retiring. I think he stayed on to, as promises to guys like Ginobili and Parker, but I, I just don't see Ball being there. So it's chaos in San Antonio, rarely, uh, and Kawhi wants out. Uh, there's reports that there's zero chance he gets traded in the West. Nobody believes that because Popovich is going to do whatever's best for the Spurs, as you just mentioned. What do you make of the whole Kawhi situation in general? Joy, you've been doing this a while, as have I. Have the Spurs, this is so unlike them. Even with the Marcus Aldridge, mm -hmm. they figured out a way to make right. it work, and he has a great year. What's happened with Kawhi, it's not exactly the same, but it reminds me somewhat of the Patriots with Alex Guerrero and his team with Tom mm -hmm. Brady. Yep. And the fact that Kawhi wants his, you know, staff involved, and the Spurs are saying, we don't want that. This is our organization. You know, keep that out. And now Kawhi feels a distrust, and this has been going on and getting worse. And now, then it comes out a few months back that Tony Parker, they have this players only meeting, and he says, What was it? Like, I've played through 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. Then Kawhi, he, Kawhi's been training at the MVPA facility in New York. It's a great facility. I love it there, but he's not with the team in the playoffs. It's so severed. And to your point, Joy, about trading the, to the Lakers, I know it's the West. But realistically, that's where you're going to extract the most value, whether right. it's Ingram, whether it's Kuzma, Ball, whatever. For Boston, for example, they're not giving up Jason Tatum. Mm. Maybe you get Jalen Brown. Maybe it's Kyrie and a pick. Uh, you know, Philadelphia, Markel Fultz, you can't trust that. So the Lakers present the most value. It's not that Kawhi – it doesn't matter to the Spurs if Kawhi wants to be a Laker and he's from there. They, that's just the, the being able to extract the most value in return. Well, also – you know, Kawhi has the leverage because he can say, okay, you can you can make that trade if you want to, but I'm not going to sign there after this year. And no GM is putting themselves in that position to get rid of, say, Kyrie and Tatum. Who's doing that? That's insanity. The only thing is, yeah, I agree. The Boston reached out to the Spurs in February. So you, you know they like to have them, but mm. you're right. There's also, as the Lakers know, there is no guarantee just because you have cap that you're going to get a guy in free agency. You know, you, there's, a, there's a lot of different players. The Lakers are going to have they can 70 million in cap this summer. So they have an opportunity to go out and get two max guys. In fear, they could also get George, Kawhi, and LeBron. You know, they can dump the dang salary. Wow. They could not re-sign Julius Randle, which is a shame because he played well. But Amazing. that would probably be the, the right move. Just because if you have an opportunity to get those three guys, you know, Kawhi's 26. Mm. I mean, he's entering his prime now. So... You know, I, he would be awfully motivated. And I think the Spurs, I think it's embarrassing to them to have this continually be like a dark cloud over them. Oh, yeah. It'll be anarchy. I can't wait for it. It's going to be so good. Los Angeles <laughs> is going to be the center. It's well, not wait, be... What do you think? Lakers, for sure? Kawhi? Uh, yeah, I do. I think really? uh, I, I think because of what you just said, they can offer the best package. And no matter what anyone says about Popovich being petty and not sending Kawhi to the West, he's going to send Kawhi wherever it makes most sense for the Spurs. It gives them the best package. That's that's the bottom line. And Ka Kawhi has leverage because he can say he's not going to sign somewhere long term. So they're going to figure it out. Like they're all smart people. They've all dealt with egos before, and everybody's going to come to a situation that works best for everyone, and that's just what it is. And I think you'll end up with the Lakers because just that's just the way the stars are aligning for, for Los Angeles to be the center of the sports universe. And I lived in Miami when all this happened with LeBron and, and Bosh and Wade, uh, and it was wonderful. And I know everyone says, like, it's going to be the worst thing for the NBA, like fans are complaining about it, but 
Everyone complains about everything. Everyone complains about Golden State being great and like Houston is not fair and, you know, Boston and Kyrie and Cleveland, blah, like I'm just over it. Like the big cities, that's just what it is. It's headlines and it's drama. Like I feel bad for you if you're in a small market. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I get it. Okay. Even though Steelers have the most championships, it's not a big deal. But <laughs> the, the point is, the, when you have, like you mentioned, big city, what Brandon said, the Knicks, when they're great, when Boston is great, when L.A. is great, when Dallas teams are good, it's just better for all, all the leagues when this happens. So that's what I think happens. Yeah, and I think there's a real desire for Kawhi to play with LeBron. And, yeah. Mm. And just, Man. to me, that would be it'd, be, it'd be so great for the league. Selfishly, I want to see that happen. Of yeah. Of course. So let's talk a little bit about the draft. I got to be honest, I'm not super moved by the draft uh, this year. It's, I, f- I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's, M- it's NBA nerdy, good draft. Yeah. You yeah. know? So it's, good, it's good for you guys. you guys. You guys love it. No offense. It's, it's, it's very good for me because there's a lot of good players. Right. <laughs> All right. So well, <laughs> I don't well, know if there's like a lot of excitement. I, I, I see what you're saying. Let's talk about a player. Let's start with kind of not the player everyone's really talking about, but I find really interesting, which is Grayson Allen. So where, where do you think he goes and what exactly does he offer? Because obviously he was a huge name in college and he's very uh, controversial and polarizing. So the intel I've gotten on Allen is it's, it's almost akin to Baker Mayfield. Now, but Mayfield goes one. Allen's not going to go in the lottery. I think he goes in the late first. Put that out there first. But, right. but when it comes to Grayson, the, the question mark for him was – is he mature enough? Is he a cancer? What's he like when you get him in a one-on-one setting? Mm. And people I've spoken with have said he's he's been really mature. And this just this echoes the Baker Mayfield sentiment. Loves to play, wants the ball. Allen is an explosive athlete. Um, he he didn't shoot it great last year, but he can shoot it. I think he's a functional NBA guard, possibly a starter, but definitely a bench guy. Great athlete. He jumped 41 inches at the combine, nice. which was third best. And he, he's just – he's going to surprise people. I think he's better than people think. And I think because he's a Duke guy, there's a perception that he's, he's soft or he's entitled. But he plays with a chip. And one – I was talking to one NBA guy, and he said um, that with Allen, the question is going to be when guy, guys are going to come at him and they want to see, is he that guy? Does he have the stones to take it? And the key for Allen will be to establish early on, go right back at them. And I, personally, I think he will. Yeah, that's uh, I, I met him and he was very composed and, and very humble. Uh, it was like listening to the advice that he was getting. Now, obviously, when you're in a game setting, it's completely different, obviously. And he has a temper. But to me, that uh, that drive, that motor, that Russell Westbrook rage, you can't teach that. You can't coach that. That's just either in someone or it's not. And I, I feel like if you can channel that, and and not allow it to eat you up, and that that's like what you, what you said. Like that'll be the trick for him. Like when somebody sticks an elbow in his neck, does he lose his mind or does he give him one back? You know, in in a, in a basketball sense, obviously. Absolutely. And motor is a skill now because yeah. a lot of guys just don't play hard. Like there are so many guys around the league that just are cash and paychecks, Joy. They're just they like basketball or it's easy and they're good at it. But like Grayson Allen's a hooper, right? And so is I love to talk about my guy. Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, so Dante, uh, he does. He, he's not good at. He's not good at the Twitter now. He's not good at the Twitter. Yeah, he's off Twitter now. Yeah, good choice. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, tell us about uh, DiVincenzo and why. And, and more importantly, why should the culture be back in on him after his Twitter uh, faux pas? Yeah, that was bad. Lightly. But here, here's the deal with Dante. He, he's a legit NBA combo guard. He's six five. He, speaking of vertical, jumped forty two inches, which was best. At the wow. combine, tied for the best vertical, um, can get to the t- can really get to the ten, can finish, athletic, uh, c- can create. Not a great passer, but like he can score, get downhill, great rebounder. And this is my favorite part. I talked to a coach who said Dante Divincenzo, and I, I call him the Big Ragu. That that's his nickname, or the mm-hmm. Michael Jordan Delaware, right. which I love as well. He <laughs> said he is the best. He's going to shock the draft. He was the best player at the pre-draft combine in Chicago. And that's my favorite part. He said he's got NBA cojones. He's got NBA balls. Uh. And what he meant by that was that this guy is going to keep coming at you. He just he just wants to hoop. And that, to me, is huge when you're talking about a guy maybe late lottery, mid-teens. So is, is that why the, the concept of just always coming back at you, is that why you say that he is most likely to be the next Donovan Mitchell? Because that's somebody I loved watching all year long. 
So I wrote a piece today on five guys, and to me, DiVincenzo is the number one on that list of potential Donovan Mitchell. You know, Mitchell's a great player, and to put up put that on a, a guy coming out is is a lot. But like that's that to me, that's his ceiling. But mm. I think his floor, like worst case, is a good is a functional NBA starting guard, um, and I think he's going to be end up being like who? at worst like a good player. But I think he could be a legit All Star. Hmm. Nice. Well. Good, good thing you got whatever Twitter then. Uh, all right, so Luca, Luca, we love we love a good uh, Euro. So mm. what's what's the deal with Luca? Well, this is a this is not a big time Euro class either. There's a real dearth of Europeans. Luca, that's the <laughs> franchise cornerstone in this draft. Like I, I think Aiton's really good, but I think Doncic is better. Mm. And I think the thing about Doncic, it might take him like two three years. Although he could be pretty good right away, but like to real, he's only 19. Right. He is the most accomplished European player, teenager ever. That includes, you know, Dirk, Porzingis, Petrovic. This guy won a EuroLeague MVP and a EuroLeague Final Four MVP at 19. That is a legit, really hard thing to do. This is this league is head and shoulders above, you know, college basketball, even the upper echelon of college hoops. He's playing against grown men. And to me, what I love, point forward, six eight, can shoot, tough playmake. And if you go back and watch the Worlds last summer, he went at Kristaps Porzingis, and he like wanted that. And that's another like that swag. You need that, especially as a high pick. Kristaps Porzingis. Porzingis. All right, Trey Young, is he a bust? Not a bust. Another. You're, you're, these are all my favorite players. So <laughs> these are the players I don't like. I love Trey Young. You know, to say, like, he's Steph Curry is not fair because that guy's a transcendent, once-in-a-generation player. But Trey Young is the first player ever to lead the country in assists and points. 27 points, 8 assists, almost 9 assists. Mm. Now, his numbers went down the second half of the year. I think he got a little tired. But he was being bombarded, Joy, with, like, traps the second he crossed half court. He can really score. He's got a good floater game. You know, the question is, who, who's he going to guard if he can switch some bigger guys? Mm -hmm. But... You know, the, from an offensive standpoint, he's pretty special. Shot so quick. Uh, Marvin Bagley. So Bagley is polarizing in that so, nobody thinks he's going to suck. Like, nobody thinks he's a bust, at least that I've talked to. But some people think he's like a stat guy. Is he like a Josh Smith guy? Like, kind of empty, you know, empty numbers. I like Bagley a lot because I think he's a legit 2010 guy. He's super. He's he might be the best athlete in the class. Size pound for pound, uh, he's freakish. You know, he's not like as long as like Wendell Carter, his teammate, but he's almost seven feet. Can handle the ball. Great touch around the hoop. You know, his shots a little bit flat, but like he he shot thirty seven percent from three, which is a decent number. And you know, again, like these rim running, left hand, like that's special. And the comparison that I've heard is like Chris Bosh. I don't know if that's fair or accurate. But you can see some of that. We love to call uh, draft prospects uh, Hall of Famers, don't we? Of course. Yes. Now, talk okay, to us about... Oh, yeah. This guy is the next, you know. <laughs> talk to us about DeAndre. Greg Oden, though. Who's the next? Oh, oh, Greg Oden. Yes. Let us know who the next Greg Oden is. It, uh, is ahead of time, please. It can't be DeAndre Ayton, though, right? DeAndre. No, I like DeAndre. DeAndre, I'm I sorry. Sorry, DeAndre. Very good player. Yeah. Okay. So, before we let you go, who goes number one overall, then? So, Ayton's going to go one. Okay. I think Bagley goes two to Sacramento, and he's kind of been the only guy that's like been all in on going to Sac. Like he's always wanted to go one. He's like he's been a prodigy his whole life. Now he's going to go two. You know what's interesting for me though is Mo Bamba. I feel like him. He when I reported that he has seven ten wingspan, which is an inch and a half longer than Gobert, I, it's almost like it's hard to believe. And I spent some time with him this week, and I love what he said. He said. Uh, I, I went up against Aiton four times. I beat him four times. And he, th he thinks he's the best player in the class. He could end up being he could end up being the best player in this draft. Wow. And he could go as low as like five to Dallas. So, um, you know, watch out for him. What's Porter is Porter's the most is the best offensive player in this class. Context there is um, I grew up playing AU with Brandon Roy. Roy was his high school coach. Mm. I think he's more offensively gifted than, than Roy. It's a matter of medical toughness, but that's what I mean with this class having a lot of top-heavy talent. Well, with the number one pick signing with Puma for a shoe deal, I have to ask, in the future of the NBA in five years, more sh BBB, more big baller brand shoes on the court, more Anta shoes on the court, or more Puma shoes on the court? 
I would say they'll find. I'd say Puma because having that Jay Z backing, and now that they're mm. going to invest, you know, relatively cheap in young guys, maybe they get Trey Young, but having Bagley and Aiton, I think it's a great move. And Puma to me has been a sleeping giant, yeah, because they have such a great appeal in Europe. If they can start to get European players, I think they could. I really mm. think they they're onto something here, and and I know it's not cool for like basketball players to wear Puma. But start having guys like Aiton and Bagley kill it, and then wear Puma, and all of a sudden, kids are, are into it. No. It didn't used to be cool to wear Nikes either. Yeah. All right, real quick before we let you go, uh, Leangelo Ball, where's he go? Leangelo Ball to the Lakers? No, he's not He's not going to get drafted. <laughs> he's not going to get drafted, Joy. That's his response. The middle ball is – listen, I – That's Brandon's favorite ball, brother. That's my mother. favorite ball. Just, put, just, just getting baskets. <laughs> um – 72 I, points. It, you know what's a shame? Like, he's a good player, and he would have been a fine college player. But because of, you know, him not playing college, and, you know, he's not ready for this moment. Like, he, he should have been a four-year college guy. Mm. So, I don't think he gets drafted. I think he'll get in a summer league camp. Um, you know, it's not that he's a bad player. This is a really deep draft. And there's a you could get real value into the 40s in this, in this draft. Maybe 50s. Wow. Well, thank you so much for all of your insight and your sneaker knowledge. And, uh, you know, I, I don't agree with you about the balls. Balls don't lose. Brandon, if, if, uh, if LaMelo Ball was in this class, if, it was, if he was in this class at 16, would he be drafted? Oh, at, at 16? LaMelo? Yeah, no, La- La- LaMelo's going to end up being like 6'10". Not. No. I think Melo is really – I think he's a really good. I think he's gonna be a really good player. He's gonna be the best out of all the Ball brothers. Do you think that? I know. I know their dad thinks that. Do you think that? Do I? I do I think it? Yeah, Lamelo's I mean, the I think best. Lonzo's gonna be a pretty good pro, but yeah, I, if you had to say like to project, I think given his size, wow, and the, he's like dunking on people now. I think he could <sighs> be really special. But but Lonzo, I mean Lonzo's, he actually advanced metrics wise when he was on the court, which wasn't a ton. He was really good last year. So you know who knows. We're big Lonzo and we're big Baller brand fans around here. I got my, B-B-B. I got, I got my JBA socks on yes, right now. Yes, JBA. JBA starts this week. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Jordan. We appreciate it. we got to have you on again sometime. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye, Thank Jordan. You. All right. Thanks to Jordan Schultz. He was great. Hey, great. Um, kind of got me actually encouraged about the draft now. Yes, and discouraged about the Ball Brothers. Uh, no, I still have faith. <sighs> Never doubt LeVar. Yeah, or LiAngelo. Uh, or God. Yes. I'm like one the one and three. Yes, you know, the Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Anyway, you can check out Jordan's podcast, Pull Up, the Pull Up Podcast with CJ McCollum. Uh it's on iTunes and everywhere else you get podcasts. Hear ye, hear ye. San Francisco is petty. Mm. But I like it. And I won't back down. Actually, it's a San Fran brewery. They made an IPA. Uh I am I can drink one beer. One beer. Uh, I can drink a few Coronas if I've already had some liquor, um, but I can't just I can't just do beer all day. Right, I, right, I, I'm right, a cider right. person. Okay, I get full. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have May- you tried the Angry Orchard Angry Orchard Rosé? Ooh, I have not. Mm. I don't know if I would like it. it. Sounds super. It sounds like a lot. Oh yeah, and you don't like the sweet stuff too. Uh, generally no. Yeah. I go for the hard stuff. Yeah. Um. Anyway, they made a beer called LeBron Tears, which is funny. Yes. Um, it's uh six point five percent alcohol. I don't know what that means because I don't look at the alcohol content of anything. What? Uh, is that a lot yeah, for beer? I mean, it's, it's uh, sounds hot. I don't know, Heller. You drink beers. It sounds IP happy. Oh, I only drink goes. them in flights, but I'll jump in here. Uh, six point five is a little high. Like a Budweiser is like five, and then it, like a I only really... drink beer flights. <laughs> he what? and 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 they go on on beer tours. What's the average, Ari? Four point five. Okay, so that's heavy. Yes. So that's a that's Potent a that's LeBron a goat tears. that's a goat petty level amount of alcohol. Yes. Um. And the real reason why I wanted to bring this up was not because San Francisco is being petty because that's funny. It's always it's always fun to go down memory lane and remind everyone what fake fans Cleveland Cavalier fans are. Uh, I love doing this. Remember when LeBron left Cleveland in 2010 and Cavs fans burned his jerseys? Which, yeah. by the way, whoever burned Kawhi Leonard's jersey, I mean, ugh, get a life. Uh, he's still on your Ashley. team. I mean, what? What'd you say, Ashley? <laughs> What was that? <laughs> what did you What did you mumble about? Something just, about what? It was the F word. Brandon, was... not to look at me. <laughs> what? Because he insinuated that I burned the jersey, which I would never do. No, I, he still plays for your team. It's insanity. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it, they took down. Anywhere. They took He's down. Lebr- they took down LeBron's banner. Uh, they, of course, <laughs> the Associated Press wrote that the decision joined the move, the drive, the shot, and the fumble in the Cleveland Sports Hall of Shame. 
Oh. Um, obviously, there was the Dan Gilbert letter, which was clearly ridiculous. Uh, he also is the owner of Fathead. Um, dot com mm-hmm. and he took down the price of LeBron fatheads from ninety nine dollars, well, basically hundred dollars to seventeen dollars and forty one cents, which happens to be the same year of the Revolutionary War trader Benedict Arnold was born. Because wow. we don't get deep in the petty. The um, of the they pets. put inside of the queue. They put LeBron bobbleheads and urinals, so fans could literally pee on LeBron James. Uh, well, not literally. Obviously, it was like, well, metaphorical. Yeah. Anyway, and well, then um, on a, his face. A, a Cleveland brewery released a Quitness beer, and then of course there were uh, LeBron James shirts saying "We are all Quitness." It's always nice to to reminisce on uh, how quickly Cleveland turned around. Yes. Voila! We love you. Come on back. They're gonna do some. That's what sports fans. Do that's what sports fans do, yeah. though. Um, the Prince of Privilege, uh, John Heller, called the brewery asking to purchase mm. LeBron tears, Facts. as white people do. They call companies with notes. Right. And after they told them, after they told him that they do not bottle it and they are not selling Gr- it. Growlers only, no marking. He he like he's told him like you guys should really consider bottling it up and selling it. Yeah, I mean, isn't that that's that's your territory, right? Yeah, that's what you guys do, right? Tell people that's how to run your their part businesses. Of the world. For sure. I mean, yeah, give notes where they weren't asked for. Absolutely. Well, that's, no, I mean, that's what I do on this podcast. Also, you have time. Is what, honestly, <laughs> yeah, you have time. Yeah, you're not worried about like you know anything. So right, right. Yeah, that's why you have time. I actually am somewhat like worried about time, but consequences less so. Yeah, all well, that's kind of the Good prince of privilege. That's you're making your people proud. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. All right, it's time for the lit list. Is it? All right, so it's World Cup. Yes, very Nigeria. Excited. Yeah, I mean them. Didn't, but go, they, didn't go so well first game. That was so embarrassing to watch. It was hard to watch. You know what? I I don't. What bothers me is when the intensity is turned up in like the last five minutes of the match. Why don't we just play like that the whole game? It's a World Cup. It's a long match, Joy. Uh huh. It is a long match. You have lots of days off in between though for rest and it's such. Fair. Yes. Um. Anyway, Mexico upset Germany, which is the biggest story um, mm-hmm. of the World Cup so far. Of course, you can watch the World Cup on Fox and FS1. Mm-hmm. Um. And they triggered a small earthquake in Mexico City. Which is so badass. The the thing about the World Cup, which people don't understand for people who don't watch soccer, which right. like, and I, just be clear, I don't watch soccer unless it's the World Cup. I'm gonna be very clear about that, um, so that I don't sound be on like the a, a moron. Right. Um, watching the World Cup at a sports bar is just the best experience mm. you're gonna have watching anything at a sports bar True because. That. Every, we don't get it here mm-hmm. in the states because we don't care about soccer that much. No matter what kind of like pitch people make on it, like yeah. you care about soccer, you don't. Pitch, no oh, pun intended. Um, the point is, mm-hmm. it's amazing. It's an amazing experience, and yeah. I wish that we all cared about soccer more because it's so so fun. Yeah, they created an earthquake. That's how much they cared. It's so awesome. How they won is very very funny, just because Mexico had a party with some prostitutes when they were leaving for the World Cup while Germany's coach, the guy who scratch and sniffs himself every now and then, he he told the Germany players to give up, I believe, sex, drugs, and social media to prepare for the World Cup. And the guys that got some before they got there kind of was upset. Was upset. Well, yeah, then, so then that's probably why we'd call it an upset. Right. Although yes. those three things, I, in general, I think are good to give up uh, before – you know, a competition like the World Cup. The competition like the World Cup. Yes. Yes. Uh, sex, se. it takes your legs out. They, that's what it says. You they use a lot of the Sugar legs. Ray Robinson says that. In general, if, well, that's, he's not the only one that says yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to get into that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> also on the lit list, LaMelo is dunking all over everybody. Uh, JBA tips off this Thursday, June mm. 21st. And it's a big week. Like you've got World Cup, Man. obviously. Uh, JBA starting June 21st. You can watch mm. that on Facebook uh, or go, you know, check the schedule if it's in your city. And, and Big Three Fridays Woo. on FS1. So you know Big it's uh, it's there's lots of still a lot of sports going on uh, yes. despite the summer. Anyway, Lamelo is out here dunking on everybody. He's the marquee player of the JBA, obviously. So obviously. we're gonna check that out. Mm-hmm. We are big baller fans around here. Yep. Um, also, just want to say, just passing note. Um, I I get to say if Le, if Lavar is a misogynist, and I don't think he is. Just gonna say that. Anyway, uh, J.R. Smith. Saw that floating around on the internet. Just, no, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, that's, that's how I feel them. about it. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, I'm right. So, uh, J.R. Smith's jersey is being auctioned off. The current bid is $9,020. Um, someone's going to buy that, and that is going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing piece to hang up in your man cave. Who's going to get it, though? I mean, I'm, obviously, a Golden State fan is going to buy it, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And Deep that's pockets. low. $9,000? Right? Should, should we buy it? I mean, 
I'm not balling. Like, I'm not balling like that. I'm keeping real Foxes. for a Jr. Smith jersey. When it was at but, three, I was about to ask you if it was cool. But now, I mean, if I if I was if I was to drop. You know, nine grand on something. Uh, the point is, I do think it's going to end up selling for a lot more than that, and that's a that's a worthwhile investment. That's that's really low. I for, hope for, for 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 a for a mental lapse that is going to change the course of NBA history. Yes, the jersey worn on that person. Mm-hmm. That's that's a good investment. I want I want Dan Gilbert to purchase it and burn it. No, why not? That'd be fun. Boo. That's some content. Boo. That's some content. That's super whack. Don't let that happen. You don't want him on the petty report for that reason. What? You don't want to put him on the petty report for that reason, Dan Gilbert. No, he don't would. destroy that. That's history. Okay. Loser power rankings. <laughs> loser power rankings. These are the loser, 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 loser of the, the week. week. All right. Ooh, Ennis Cantor. Mm. Ennis. All right. Let me first be very clear. I like Ennis Cantor. What? I know people don't like Ennis Cantor. But Ennis Cantor is with the sh**. Just because he talks a lot? No. He ain't afraid of LeBron James. Now he's... Ugh, I'm, I'm not going to... Well, okay, listen. It's why it's, it doesn't make any sense. Yes. Okay, but but Ennis Cantor is not afraid of LeBron James. And yes. I don't like punks, all right? Don't you ever come in my house and punk me? He does every time. Who? LeBron punks in... No, no, he does not. He's the king of New York, is he not? No, he is not. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm going to New York and say that. Michael Jordan go, is. Go to, go to New York and say that. Okay. No, I, w- I would never. Won't, but you no, won't. Of course but not. But you won't. No. But you Enos won't. isn't the, the king of New York either. No, he's not. But he's closer to the king of New York than LeBron because he don't play for the Knicks. And Michael Jordan does some more winning. Anyway, the point is, uh, Ennis Cantor says he they have a, a chance to land LeBron. They don't. You don't have a chance to land LeBron. Why is he? What? I don't know. I, I mean, every, everyone's just saying things about LeBron now at this point. But there, there's, there's, you know, I'm going to share it in it. There's a 0% chance that LeBron goes to New York. Because here's Zero. why. It's not about Ennis, Ennis Cantor either. It, it has nothing to do with him. It has 100% to do with James Dolan owns the team. And yes. there's just no way that no, LeBron no. James is leaving Dan Gilbert to go play for James Dolan. Yeah. I was at a 1 now. I'm at a 0. You're right. Talk me into it. You were at a 1? I was at a 1. That's high. Eh, you know, God exists. I don't know who's praying for the Knicks fans. God, you know LeVar, LiAngelo. <laughs> I can't let just say God Lakers. exists. That's a hot take to a lot of people listening. Lakers. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> Get all sacrilegious <laughs> on you. Um, all right. This is a hot take alert. Yes. Came up with this all on my own. Yes. Let's uh, hear I feel it. strong about it. So, uh, for some reason, we're still getting news about Andrew Luck. I didn't know Andrew Luck still played in the NFL. So Why? i got to be honest with you. Um, I had no idea. And the reason is because he doesn't play football. Okay. There are doesn't throw football. There are a lot of similarities that it, well, well, okay. So that's what happened. Like there was this big, big revolutionary news that Andrew Luck is now throwing mini footballs. Woo! Which I don't know who does that help. How many? I, I, smaller than a regular regulation football. You know what I mean? I don't know why that helps anyone. <laughs> and then oh. uh, they were like, he's gonna, they're gonna like slowly integrate him back in. And then it just came to me. Andrew Luck is the Derrick Rose of the NFL. Bam. That's it. Stop telling me when Andrew Luck has done something. You know, my my car, I was in a car accident, and I'm getting these alerts. Like, we're going to tell you when when you have an update on your car. Just tell me when the car's fixed. I don't know. Why am I getting this text message? You know, I get this text message like, oh, Bay text me. No, I have an update about nothing. Oh, thank you. You have my number. That's what you let me we're know. putting it Stop on the list now. Stop telling me when Andrew Luck has done something, and let me know when Andrew Luck plays football again. I mean, no, no, not even then. You Not get, even we're gonna we're gonna change the app from the Derrick Rose app. All right, it's gonna stop, it's gonna be the stop it. telling me app and just just, <laughs> just only, I people. should get one alert. That's yeah. the whole point of the app. I yeah. should get one alert, so I can be very excited when I get an alert from this yes. app. Tell me when Andrew Luck is healthy enough to play in the NFL football, not throw a mini football, mm. not touch the field with his cleats, mm. okay? Not move his shoulder all the way around. Stop telling me when Derrick Rose's <laughs> knee bends 100%. Just yeah. tell me when they're healthy. I don't need an update every 15 days about some Andrew Luck blew his nose, okay? Andrew Luck's never going to be healthy. Probably not. No. Probably not. That's why the app hasn't been created. Oh, it's so frustrating. I'm yes. so done with Andrew Luck watch. Uh, someone else who got injured and their career changed dramatically. RG3 is taking your boy Lamar under his wing. This is embarrassing. It really is. I'm trying to help nurture him as much as I possibly can so that when he flies away, he is ready to fly away. Because when you watch about? it fly away, at that point, it's up to that bird. It's a chicken soup from the Teenage Soul entry. Like, what, what does that even mean? What are you saying? Ooh, ooh. That was a good book, though. Um, All of them were. I don't know what RG3 is talking about. I saved a bird. 
not really. He died. But I, I, the, the other day, there was a bird. There was a bird in the middle of the street uh, when we were coming home, and Earl was like, uh, "Yeah, that that bird just got hit." And there was his little wingy. It was gone. flapping. He was like, "What kind of bird was it?" Uh, it's the oh, wild it was one. Like a little bird. And and before I could get to him, he got ran over again. <laughs> you were walking up to the bird no, and got ran in the over. Car. I was in the car. Well, I was oh, deciding if I was going to save it or not. I got ran over again. So I was like, now nah, I got to save it. So, but you can't touch birds because if you touch, the, if you get the human germs on them, then the other Swine birds, flu. the other birds kill them. Oh, I think. Anyway, that could be completely fake news, but yeah, I mean, we listen. <laughs> Yeah. We're just repeating what yeah. was told to us exactly. growing yeah. up. Exactly. You can't touch bird. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe that's why. <laughs> that's what it was. Don't, like, touch, don't that touch that bird. bird. The other bird don't kill touch it. that bird. You're going to kill everybody in the house. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> sh- it's so, There's <laughs> no way that's <laughs> accurate. You're totally right. You're totally right about right. that. Anyway, so I went and got a washcloth, which is now no longer a member of our towel family. <laughs> I, I went and picked up the bird and took it yeah. out of the middle of the street and, and put him in the shade so he could die in peace. I wasn't. I wasn't gonna let him get run over again. Sure. I thought maybe you, you know he could, re- he could rehabilitate you went himself. And wasted a washcloth to move a dead bird to the shade <laughs> to die. To die in peace. I feel like I got good animal karma off of that. You know what? Are you, what are you gonna do with the animal karma? I don't know. Maybe a, a stray dog will decide not to bite my ass next time. But I, but I took the bird out of the middle of the street. I've never been caught by a stray dog. Never been caught. Oh I, I've been chased. God. I've been chased. Uh, well, I meant like the next time I'm around a street. I dog. love that this quote from RG3 is so nonsensical that we've gotten to this There's point. There's nothing to break down there. <laughs> I mean, what do you? What could you possibly be te- be teaching him? Nothing. Just a loser, RG. No, he, uh, RG3 is not a loser. He's not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, time for the culture report. This is a very serious, very intense culture report. It is. Let's do it. First off, we have to say Happy Father's Day to Drake. Right? Yeah, you're just gonna steal an internet joke and pretend like you made I'm that just, up. No, I'm I'm saying it's what it's 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 worth saying. Happy Father's Day to Drake in the culture report. Where else am I gonna talk about it? He drops a new album so, on Friday. Keep it real. You saw that on a meme, huh? Yeah. Okay. Go what? ahead. Go ahead. I didn't see it on a meme. Mm-hmm. I thought about him on Father's Day. I, 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 before you move on, since, yes. you, since you said that really quickly. Okay. Here we go. Um, I'm I'm not gonna throw my friend on the bus, but I kind of am gonna throw him under the bus. Yes. Uh, so, uh I'll, I'll tell him this in here later. I really was not offended, but just as a yes. note, okay, yes. um, you can't ask everybody about Father's Day. Can't do it's it. It's just not one of those holidays. You just like, can't. like, like Mother's Day yes. is an international day yes. of love, okay, mm-hmm. because it's moms. Yeah. Fathers, eh, you know, it's, it can go either way. It's, it's just, you know, sometimes you have good dads. Sometimes you should treat it like Easter. You know, actually, if you have a good dad, it's like, oh, good for you. Yes. Like, oh, oh, your dad nice. was. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 He stayed the whole time. <laughs> cool. You know, so like that, that's just, you know, you just have to like be careful how you ask me about Father's Day. Uh, yeah. Papa's Rolling Stone. Uh, sometimes they are. Sometimes. Um, sometimes. Sometimes you just never really even, like, sometimes Rolling Stones, like, stop for a second. Right. Just keep going. And anyway, like sometimes, the sometimes. point is, I was asked if I spoke to my father on Father's Day. The answer is no, obviously. And uh, it was just a funny oh, interaction. Bird. So I, just as a note, for next Father's Day, right. you can't ask everybody about Father's Day. Be, be wary of it. Be it's wary just, of it. I learned about the sensitivities of Father's Day it, when it I was hel- looking at cards. I was like, oh, that one doesn't really fit. Right, like, it's oh, too, like, really like, it's too serious. Like, I don't, like yeah. do I love him that much? Yeah. Where's no. the mahogany ones? The right. our, our voice? The, I, I need more vague. You know? Like, whereas Mother's Day, I'm like, this doesn't really uh, and say it intensely <laughs> enough. I'm going to have to add more at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, Mom, I really, really love you. I love oh, the moms. Uh, Shouts yes. out to the moms. Shout out, moms. Oh. Love you, moms. Every and shout out, you know what? And shout out to the good dads. There's a lot yeah, of, of there's course, a lot of good yeah. dads in my life, my uh, just not the actual job. dad. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love the good dads in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in, in Heller's words, that's a very high risk, low reward uh, question. And it's the truth. Gotta be wearing higher list, high risk, low reward <laughs> questions. All right, moving on. Cultural. Uh, just Drake drops the album this Friday. It's yes. going to be a big moment for the King of the North. Because um, June of 2018 has gone down as ARP Hip Hop Takeover Month. Yes. Or the geri- Geriatric OGs. Um, and the month that I had to download title again. Jay-Z and Nas become two of the newest 40-plus-year-old rappers to release a project in June. I wanted to give Nas the credit he deserves and want to give his time his album some time but jay-z and beyonce derailed that joy what did you think of everything is love by the beyonce carter and jay-z sean carter whatever his name is okay first of all uh it's beyonce Knowles still okay 
Wow. All right. Wow. I know she wants. I know it's the Carters. Okay, but but uh, but I I recognize Beyonce Knowles. First really? Of all. Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, Beyonce is what thirty two years old. Approximately. Yeah, approximately, approximately thirty two years old. Yes. Okay. Um, she is not in her forties at all. Let's start no with. One let's said start, she was let's in start her 40s. with this. She's thirty six. Yeah. Impossible. Beyonce is thirty six. Thirty six. You can be thirty six. What's wrong with being thirty six? Nothing's wrong with being thirty. I'm gonna be thirty six soon. Before I know it, I'll be thirty six. There's nothing wrong with being thirty six. I just thought she was thirty two. Why are you coming thirty six? Because this might have messed up my entire take. Uh, <laughs> I thought she was thirty two. I was I was operating under that bad information. Let's act like she looks like a thirty three. Looks Beyonce like looks like an angel. Okay, right, she has yeah. no age. First of angel. all, uh, but it does kind of mess up my take. First of all, I will not be downloading Title again. You will not get me with that. <laughs> all right, it's it's an it's an oh, inferior man. app to begin with. It uh, rarely works with cars, and I already have Spotify, so I'll just wait and I'll listen online. All right, or I'll listen on someone else that has Title uh, yes. because I'm not doing it. I've done that. That's it's. Yeah. It only it was only only on Title for like two days, but it was long enough for me to. They got my thirteen dollars. No, you're not gonna. You're not gonna get another dollar out of me. Yeah. They got me for like six months because I forgot that I subscribed to it. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's that's one. As far as the ARP tour goes, yes. very accurate. We haven't even mentioned Black Thought. Black Thought has decided uh, to drop an album on us yes. as well. So and the, and and uh, what is the Push thing? A what is the thing with? Well, yeah, we discussed Pusha T yeah, at length. Yeah. Um, so it's Pusha T. It's Black Thought. It's Jay Z. It's Nas. Mm-hmm. Um, all of whom I appreciate. But what is this like short album thing? Is there a reason for that? They've they've been too long. Kanye West said they've been too long. I want a short album, so he's making a bunch of twenty minute albums. Jay Z and Beyonce, low key. We didn't even mention Kanye in that in that list of old rappers. Uh, he, oh, he's the yeah, he's the, he's he's okay. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the here, here's the thing with Jay Z and Beyonce. All okay. right, and and as far as like them taking away Nas's spotlight, that's Nas's fault. He he had time to to not put it out on on. This, the same time as Jay Z and Beyonce, okay. nobody. No one. No, it was a surprise album. Okay. Just, no one knew this was coming. Do some research. I feel like you know some people. Okay? Yeah, some industry people should know. You probably yeah. know who. Somebody yeah. knows something. Yeah, ask All right, it out. was like, a surprise hey, album. Though. Hey, uh, Jay. Yeah. You know, want to help me out? So there's that. Second, I while the video is one of the greatest artistic masterpieces ever put together, video and actually I don't even know how it even happened. Yes. Because I was like, whoa, that's the Louvre. If you don't know yes. what the Louvre is, it's an it's an incredible museum in Paris, and it's where the Mona Lisa is, it's, yeah, it's which you may Louvre. have learned by watching that video, which right. is fine. I don't care how people get educated. Um, the Thank point man. is <laughs> that shade. that uh, that album it it did not move me for multiple Joy. reasons, and this is not Beyonce slander. This is actually Beyonce praise. Jay Z, I'm sorry, is you 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 had your time, okay? And we love you, Jay Z. We get it, but. Time Can we? Uh, there's, there's, there's so many levels to this. We get a Beyonce naked picture, and I got to see naked Jay Z in the picture. <laughs> I didn't ask for that. I'm like, whoa, Beyonce's butt. Why is, why is Jay Z naked in the picture? I don't want to see Jay Jay Z naked. I want to see Beyonce naked. You don't, you don't like them doing things as a things as a group, listen, as a, as a core. Listen, I'm all for beautiful black love. Okay? Yes, I'm, I'm I'm all for it. Yes, all right? we're here to champion it. We're, we're great. Yes, right. But it, enough. All right. It's it, let, 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 can, can let Beyonce shine. All right. Please, I don't want to. She has shine. I don't. All the shine. Uh, okay, she's let her Beyonce. Sh- let her shine some more. I don't need to hear Beyonce rapping. It's beautiful. She's so good. She's really, really good. Is she though? She's There's pretty good. There's no hooks in that entire album. I she's can't get jiggy. All the <laughs> I, where, where, where's the bangers? I'm mean, trying to get jiggy. I am trying to get jiggy. That's listen, what I listen to music for. Sure, all these old, all these old people were our albums. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blanket the term. I didn't want to do this. I'm gonna blanket it. They have all been TED talks to really trap beats. Okay. Listen, and I, some know, to Kanye beats. I know everyone's woke now, but yes. every once in a while, I just need to turn it off. And th- and honestly, like for people who don't like the Migos, this is why they're winning. But Quavo's because, on ape shit, though. Okay, okay, fine. Skirt, skirt, skirt. Fine. That's the one song. And guess what it's called? What? Ape shit. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it real. I just want I, I want I want Beyonce you... to make the songs that make me move because that's what Beyonce is. She's amazing. She's oh, the greatest. Was, was Lemonade such a booty shaker? Uh, yes. Okay. The whole thing? The entire thing. Okay. You can get down to every song in Lemonade. Okay. Okay. Pharrell's on, produ- producing on this thing. Keep it real. It's a great album. Keep it album. real. You did more than nod your head to that entire album. To which one? Everything is Love. I brush my teeth vigorously to Ape Oh. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> to another song? <laughs> to another song that's on the, there? That's the song. To right. us, and then, you know, the first song's, you know, it's 
It's a prelude. There's ape shit, and then there's like 45 minutes of the rest of the album that sounds exactly the same. It's only 38 minutes long. I We listened to the entire album, and I was like, what, uh, is this a song on repeat? <laughs> I literally could not tell the difference. Like, it all sounds Listen, the same. I got, I got other stuff to go through. I can't, you can't just be slandering Jay-Z and Beyonce throwing a project out there. That's good. Some of the best work that they've done. Jay-Z is showing everyone in a time where people are are questioning who's writing what, that he still is one of the best writers of rap out. Jay-Z is on the Mount Rushmore of rappers, okay? Now, I yes. love Jay-Z, okay? Yes. But it's time for him to produce and write, and it's and just let Beyonce... We know you guys are together, okay? What are you trying to... Why can't Beyonce just stop? We get it. Why can't Beyonce just we stop? We get it. You guys are married. I said the same thing when Crazy in Love came out. I was like, I get it. Y'all like each other. Okay, wait. <laughs> you were saying it's like Crazy in Love yes. and you're not nauseated with it at this point? I mean, it's been nauseating up until this point. No, absolutely not. You. No, I, 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 I need my Beyonce and I'm, and I need I need her. Okay. I love Jay Z, but I need I need my Beyonce. Y'all don't y'all don't y'all don't want these, y'all don't want these people to be happy. Y'all don't want these people to be. Happy I want happy. happiness. You don't want for it. everyone. You but I it. this is what I need. I'm asking for what I need. <sighs> Quick follow up. Tiffany Haddish hosted the MTV Movie Award TV Awards. First black woman to host the award show. Black Panther won all the awards that matter if any of them actually matter. Kim K was rocking box braids, like doing a Boderic twist thing. What do you think? What do you think about this whole MTV Movie Awards thing? Period. Uh, I like the MTV Movie Awards; they're fun. Yeah, it's like a, they a, added TV this year. It's a oh, and TV, MV, t- movie and TV awards. Uh, I love Tiffany. She's yes. welcome on the podcast anytime. Yes, she's, please. She's just one of my favorites. Yes. Um, I I like the the MTV Awards because it's like light mm-hmm. and no one really takes it that serious, but right. it's fun. Yeah. Uh, and I loved that Chadwick Boseman gave the award to uh, to that Shaw, was Mr. Shaw. Beautiful. That was uh, amazing. I can't moment. remember his first name right now. Is it Eric? Yeah. He's a hero. Um, I call him hero. Yes. Uh, so I like that he gave that award away. Yes. But yeah, I like the, the MTV. Yeah, I, the one the one moment that was weird for me, Michael B. Jordan won Best Villain and then told the audience, hey, guys, could you please stop? Uh, Chadwick Boseman wanted me to ask you guys if you please stop asking him to say Wakanda forever Never. in public. Sorry, Chadwick. <laughs> you don't get that. We yeah. can't we can't submit to that. Yeah, Are you going to are you going to do a Black Panther, too? OK, then. OK, then. Yes. That, yes. We will say it. For there's all literally time. never going to be a point in your life where people don't say Wakanda forever to you. No, I want I want Chadwick Boseman to play me in my biopic and I want him to start it with saying Wakanda, <laughs> Wakanda forever. forever. Yeah, of course. Why not? James Shaw Jr. James Shaw. James the Waffle Shaw. House hero. Yes. Yes. James and Eric's yes. close. Um, yes. As far as names go. Uh, sorry, Chadwick. That's never happening. Yes. It's a nice request, though. Mm-hmm. But that does make that meme look even more realistic now. Oh yeah. Where he's just like just soul's dead. He's got the limp his or his his wrists are limp. Wakanda still. Yeah. (laughs) All right. That was a that was quite the podcast. Got a lot a lot going on in there. Yes. Um thank you so much for joining us. Make sure that you subscribe and um share with your friends. Follow us on social media at maybe I'm crazy pod. Mm -hmm. Leave all your comments because Brandon reads all of them because he's sick. (laughs) I've tried talking about this. He will not listen. Uh, I said I do have maybe I'm a food abuser. Yeah, you have, it's affecting your psyche. It's the best advice Skip Bayless ever gave me, which is stop oh listening to what people God. say on social media, and it's true. Uh, I still lo- look at the social media, but it can affect you. Okay, okay? I know I'm fine. I'm fine. Like you, you just cannot. I went to Roscoe's after reading the comment though, and got a shirt, so that's why I'm wearing. Oh this yeah, today. well there's a good shirt. Yeah, there's a good shirt. So much. Thank you. Um, anyway, thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next week. We have an exciting podcast next mm-hmm. week. Um, we're going to do an NBA award show, hey. uh, similar to our Valentine's Day show, mm-hmm. similar to our New Year's Day show. Mm-hmm. So we hope you enjoy that. You're and uh, make sure you subscribe so you get that. Love you. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Oh.